The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it wants to improve procedures to prevent human error. A series of recent incidents have led to a leak of radioactive rainwater and the suspension of a decontamination system. The president of Tokyo Electric Power Company told lawmakers that workers at the plant are overstretched. We need to increase the workforce. We also believe it's very important to improve their working environment. Earlier on Monday, a human error caused a partial power failure at Fukushima Daiichi. TEPCO officials say a worker mistakenly pushed the stop button of a switchboard during an inspection. A pump that injects water to cool nuclear fuel inside Reactor 1 stopped, but a backup pump quickly kicked in. Officials say the reactor's temperatures remained unchanged. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority says the situation at Fukushima Daiichi could impact TEPCO's bid to restart its largest nuclear reactor. The situation at Fukushima Daiichi has not been sufficiently stabilized to reassure the public about safety. We will proceed very carefully with our safety inspections at Kashiwazaki Kariwa. Tanaka added he ordered TEPCO to submit a report on safety management at Kashiwazaki Kariwa by the end of this week. Seismologists in Japan have made a discovery that could cause concern. They say there are almost certainly far more dangerous active faults than was generally believed. That's because almost all of them are underground and difficult to spot. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has more. Seismologists have tried for decades to predict when earthquakes will strike without success. They typically watch for movements in known major active faults. But they've shifted their studies to include seemingly small active faults considered risks. Professor Shinji Toda at Tohoku University is one of the experts closely watching the link between active faults and earthquakes. He studied quakes with a magnitude of 6.5 or more that occurred in Japan over the past 90 years. He focused on the changes these faults made on the surface when they moved. For some of the quakes he looked at, shown here in white, he identified clear vertical and horizontal displacements corresponding to the scale of the quakes or the size of the active faults. In other words, they behaved as expected. But the tremors shown in red didn't. They account for as much as 80% of all powerful quakes. Researchers found they only had slight noticeable changes or no changes at all on the surface. More importantly, for most of these quakes, the active faults had not been identified beforehand. One such quake happened five years ago in the northeastern prefecture of Iwate. Scientists found only small vertical displacements around the epicenter. Professor Toda carried out an excavation survey to get more information. He found vertical displacements of about two meters underground, not visible from the surface. This was evidence that the active fault had moved again and again in earthquakes in the past. It becomes very difficult to find an active fault when it shows only tiny displacements on the surface. Researchers have not given up finding a way to detect active faults more accurately. They're now interested in using a laser-based aerial method as one survey technology.
Lasers can clearly show the active fault, even if it's covered by thick trees. But lasers alone cannot identify all the faults hiding underground. Researchers need to discuss the appropriate survey methods. We know now that we can't say places without active faults are safe. Scientists may one day be able to detect all the active faults that trigger disastrous tremors, but until then, the new study suggests people should not drop their guard, even if current research says the seismic activity in the region is limited. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World, Tokyo. how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing.
Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has said that some aspects of President Hassan Rouhani's recent visit to New York were inappropriate. Since his inauguration, Rouhani has tried to reach out to the West. Rouhani spoke with U.S. President Barack Obama on the phone last month while in New York for the U.N. General Assembly. It was the first direct exchange between presidents of the two countries since Iran's Islamic Revolution in 1979. Hamani addressed members of the military on Saturday in Tehran. He said that he supports Iran's diplomats but remains skeptical about America. In our opinion, some of what occurred during the New York trip was not proper. We are still pessimistic about the American leadership. U.S. and European leaders are hoping for concessions to resolve the nuclear impasse during talks scheduled for October 15th. Chinese President Xi Jinping has spoken out at the summit against a traditional ally. He said Chinese leaders will support UN sanctions to prevent North Korea from possessing nuclear arms. Xi met with South Korean President Park Geun-hye. He reassured her about relations between their countries. China and South Korea have a great relationship. We have built a good partnership in various fields. We'd like to ask for China's support to help North Korea abandon nuclear arms and seek economic development. The leaders discussed the six-party talks on the North Korean nuclear program. President Xi said he hopes negotiators can work together to get back to the table. Park said North Korean leaders need to demonstrate a sincere desire to reopen talks. Now, NHK has learned of the contents of the draft report from the TPP ministers' meeting. It indicates the talks are not going quite as smoothly as hoped in a key area, the elimination of tariffs. The report notes progress is being made in areas such as simplifying trade-related processes and establishing rules for online commerce. Negotiators have also moved forward with language extending aid to emerging economies to develop their human resources and technological capabilities. The report also says there has been substantial progress toward eliminating tariffs for farm and industrial goods. But the document suggests many countries remain committed to protecting goods they consider key to their economies. Japanese government sources say U.S. officials wanted to include language stressing the group's achievements. However, other participants opposed the move, saying such language would not reflect reality. The report will be submitted at Tuesday's summit.